Hit the button. It's your boy. Dave P's in the house. November 3rd. Hope you're voting. Hope you're voted. If not, hopefully you're a Democrat. Just kidding. It's your boy, <laughs> Dave P. Today we're talking about the hardest ship to sail. Mr. Papino, what is the hardest ship to sail? That is a partnership. A and partnership. what comes to mind for you right now? What, what is the reason so many partnerships fail? Well, a lot of times the, uh, the two people involved, man or woman, whatever it is, um, they are only out for really one thing and then their core values do not align. Um, and so if they're out for one thing, which typically a lot of it's money, um, they will hit a certain level of success, but will not sustain long-term success because their values and there's more levels to this as we'll go into this video about, um, they might see short-term success, but in the long, long haul or long-term it ends up unraveling. And <clears throat> you and I have both been in business partnerships before that did not work out. And so there's a lot of lessons to be learned. And that's the purpose of this video today is to, if you guys are in partnerships and uh, believe it or not, a lot of partnerships nowadays, usually it's, uh, the, the, it's a you know spouse, husband and wife and vice versa. So it's um, rightfully so. It's a good topic to choose uh, to be talking about this today because um, hopefully it uh, will help people stay in business for the long haul. I think uh, I think a lot of partnerships get started very loosely, right? I mean, it's like, you know, we've we've met, we've been young bucks in the business, and we've met other young bucks in the business. And I'll tell you what partnership never works out, and RJ will concur when one guy says, "I'll bring the money," and then you bring the boots on the ground, right? You've seen that before, right, RJ? Absolutely. One guy's like, let me bring the money and then you do all the work and build the staff and do all the house hunting. And we're referring to the real estate business. But, you know, whenever one guy says, I'll bring all the money and the other guy is the boots on the ground uh, and then you're supposed to go 50 50. I promise you the guy with the boots on the ground is very, very soon going to be leaving and exiting this partnership because the guy that's got to be the boots on the ground always is the hardest, uh, it's the hardest job, right? And they know they could go raise capital at a much lower rate than giving up half of the business. What, what do I need you for? So one partnership I know consistently fails is when one guy wants to bring the money, the other guy brings the experience. Would you agree, RJ? Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's definitely one of them. And um, you know, in fact, like there's, there's been partnerships that we've been involved in just like that. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's not, it's not sustainable, you know, it's just not sustainable because you will have that question um, where it will come up and one partner is thinking that they're putting in all of the hard work. Sure. And in reality, the person that's boots on the ground, unless they have a team behind them is doing a lot of the hard work. Absolutely. And so now I do want to, I do want to mention this, like sometimes you do have to uh, go into partnerships like that. Um, to get experience and get um, the knowledge and the wherewithal um, to be able to get that, get that knowledge and go on and move on to um, a better partnership. So there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that if you have to do it to get credibility. We talk a lot about that in the, the private money raising um, you know, strategies that it's better to uh, take a partnership like that, especially if you have no experience. And that's what it comes down to, you know? So the other person has leverage on, over that. But as long as you can communicate that upfront, like, hey, you know, I'd love to do this. I know it's not gonna be long-term, but we can do this for maybe one or two years. And then eventually I'll, I'll probably do this on my own or find a better, uh, you know, equity uh, split or partnership. Hey, you know, you gotta pay to play is what I heard from what you just said. You gotta pay to play. Um, but that's the beauty of real estate. You can raise financial partners on a deal by deal basis. You don't need to give up 
half of your business and your entire portfolio and everything that you do, um, you know, for, for this one initial capital partner. So what we're talking about is very valid information. You know, whenever one guy wants to bring the money, the other guy wants to bring the deal or the experience or all the deals, you don't need to split up your entire company. You can do it on a deal per deal basis. And the guy with the boots on the ground, you get all my love. You're the guy. You're the guy. You're me and RJ back in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way not until now. We're still out there pounding the pavement, everybody. Um, and we will be for a long, long time. Um, but the boots on the ground guy gets the pat on the back from uh, Dave and RJ because we know what it's like. It's very difficult to go find deals. Look, it's very easy to find money, though. There's a lot of people out there with money, respectfully. Um, but when it comes to a true business partnership, so let's uh, switch gears and pretend you got two guys like Dave and RJ who are willing to be the boots on the ground uh, operators, because that's the hard work. And that's where the real partnership comes into play. RJ, what advice comes to mind right off the bat, as far as two boots on the ground guys like you and I, what's allowed us to succeed? Yeah, what's allowed us to, to succeed um, is you know, really solid communication is number one. Number two is um, having similar core values. I think we both uh, grew up in um, middle-class families that didn't really have a lot that, you know, struggled to put food on the table and, you know, grateful for our parents that worked their asses off to get us into a position to um, you know, get the things that, uh, uh, that we got in life to be able to even get on this path, right? And so um, some core values, communication, and lastly is that um, um, being able to, um, you know, for, for a dynamic to work, it's typically having one person compliment the other. And there's usually what happens is that you're, you're attracting your own self, right? You're attracting more people like yourself, just how it works, it's the law of attraction. Um, so we attracted, you know, our partnership, right? But there are certain things in our partnership that you do better to compliment what I don't do and, and vice versa. There's stuff that I don't do that you compliment. So um, a lot of times what I see not working out is when you have the same people going after the same thing, but they just, they're butting heads on each other because they're the same person. Mm. They're the same person, right? So um, I think that's, that's, those are just three elements that have just helped us survive th these many years hmm. um, for the long haul. And, you know, for as lo ever long as we want to do this, right? Um, so it's communication, having the same core values and um, the complementing each other of uh, personalities and strengths and weaknesses. Let me tell you, and that's the hardest thing to do though. So the most, the strongest partnerships, I would argue, are just what you said, you know, you got to have the core values and similar beliefs and whatnot, uh, which is, you know, it comes from your background and whatnot. Um, but being able to complement one another like yin and yang means it's two different, uh, you know, two different animals in, in the cage and, and, and whatnot. Um, however, the similar values, meaning you and I, we both want to win. We enjoy winning very much. And um, so we have the same core values as far as the underlying tone is the same. However, the personality is much different. And that's where the complimenting comes into play. But that's also where I feel, uh, you know, a partnership can run into some rocky ro waters. And that goes back to the ego. So, um inevitably in a partnership that RJ and I have dealt with this stuff as well, there will be one partner who feels at any given day, it could be a daily thing. It could be a, it could, it's not even about a project. It's not even about one task. It could be about a task. It, it could be about a project. It could be about just uh, the overall, there's always going to be thoughts that creep up of like, I'm doing more or I deserve more. Right. That's, I mean, would you, would you agree, RJ? Like that, they, these are natural ego beliefs, right? Like I deserve more, right? Yeah, that, that happens to, that, you know, when we're in the thick of things and we're working our asses off, that always, um, that thought comes into mind. And so it's your ability to reframe them. Um, yes. 
and and think a little bit bigger. Um, that's just small thinking, you know. And um, in reality, the other person is actually working on on certain things or certain different aspects of the business that you don't it know is. about. It's, we're 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 all virtual, as you know, and we have these uh, KPIs that we keep track of. So, um, but sometimes when we both have bad days, like any anything any partnership does. So it's always good to kind of check in. It's those check-in points that really matter and asking some solid questions, um, better questions also matter um, and doing it in a way where it's um, not, so, not so abrasive. You know, there's certain right. ways to ask a question where it's not coming off like you're a freaking asshole. You know what I mean? And having so, grace, having that grace, you know, grace, grace with one yep. another. We, we both made a lot of mistakes. We've both made six figure mistakes. You know, I think it's, I can't pinpoint one thing or the other, but in the moment, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, and uh, it's like this, man. I mean, we, we've had this conversation like early on. It's like, look, two people are like in this partnership. Sometimes one person starting to have some breakthroughs or like learn something. So the boom, they learn something and like, they got to have the grace for the partner to like learn and creep up, you know? And then this partner, boom, came onto something. And that's this partner's opportunity to be like, oh, I know more. And like, you could easily break up at that point, or you can have the grace to bring the next person along. So a good partnership, one plus one could equal 11. Okay. It's not always one plus one equals two and you got to have a little bit of a long-term mindset would you agree rj i mean yeah it requires a lot of patience just like uh any relationship any and then um, honesty partnership yep. honesty you know like when you mess up and somebody calls you out on something and you know and it is what it is just be honest own it you know and it does these are the hard things in life and um it gets easier as we get older would you agree rj yeah Things that, that we've learned to do, um, not only in partnership, but also in our business and our team is talk about the, uh, what most people don't want to talk about, you know? And, and so we bring it up. We have a platform where we can say, look, now's the time, bring it up. You know, if you want to call something out that just didn't fit the core values or if somebody wasn't being their best self, call it out, you know? So we welcome that. Um, that's how you and I have operated and now it's spreading to the team. Yeah. All of our oh. teams are watching this right now. And so they know that, you know, it is true. So if somebody's slacking and, you know, dicking around, not being their best self, they get called out. You're and just then, full. You're just full. You got a potty mouth tonight, RJ. What are we doing? <laughs> We're on Facebook. <laughs> um, I'll tell you this though, but my, my, um, my relationship with RJ is my longest term relationship I've ever been in. That's an interesting thing to say, right? And uh, I believe that the work we have done uh, with each other and on ourselves has helped me tremendously in my relationship uh, with my better half, which is in the other room, Lindsay, you know? And um, it's, uh, it's having those, it's discussing the undiscussables from a place of grace and love, not a place of, judgment and, uh, and, and critique, you know, um, and, uh, and it's noticing, uh, it's noticing strengths, right. And noticing strengths, um, and, and being in the right seat. And sometimes it takes uh, a little deflation of the ego to respectfully resign from a seat out of the bus. And I think both of us, we can vouch that, uh, we have sat in, basically every single seat in the company, you know, from leasing to uh, buy, purchasing to raising money to, you know, dispositions and um, accounting. And even though neither one of us are accountants, <coughs> pardon me, um, we've sat in every single seat. And then as time goes on, um, if you can hang in there with your partner, you're going to start to see the true genius zone coming out in, in certain areas. And, uh, and once that takes place, then you can actually start to, you know, document your genius zone and what you do for that specific department. And then you can actually empower leaders into those roles. Um, 
and that it takes a while to get there. But RJ, why don't you touch on empowering the team and uh, kind of what that looks like? Absolutely. So what, what Dave's talking about is like when, you know, when you're starting out, you're doing everything. And for those of you guys that are watching this and, and you might have a small business right now, you know, the first hire that I would recommend is an assistant. Um, but in order to get that assistant to be successful and stay with you in the long, so the long haul, you got to make sure that you're documenting all your systems and everything that you're doing that you want to delegate, right? Because sometimes it's all up here and it's not communicated effectively uh, to whoever you're going to delegate it to. And then you don't see results and then you get frustrated and you're just in this like consistent, frustrated, um, firing, hiring uh, circle. And so what Dave's talking about is be very specific with what you're wanting. And it starts by documenting. And we've learned that uh, to be very useful to where we are now in our team, where other people in our team, our team members are documenting their activities so that they could get those um, tasks to somebody else and they're training somebody else. So that, uh, that is a, um, sorry, I lost, I lost you there, but that is the a call came in. But that's the that's kind of what is going on in our in our team. It's been going on for a while now, and it's just um, leaders are documenting processes for um, other team members. So it's pretty cool. So we're gonna put a bow on this thing, RJ. What uh, what final thoughts do you got if somebody's looking to enter a partnership for a real estate business? We already touched on like real estate could very much be a deal by deal type of business. We've also touched on the business relationship of, hey, I'm going to be the money guy. You be the boots on the ground. We're going to split everything 50-50. Generally uh -huh. doesn't work out is what uh -huh. we've seen in our experience. We've talked about uh, both boots on the ground, partners, um, you know, learning every seat on the bus and then slowly kind of finding where your genius zone lies and then completely owning it and giving that when you see a partner in his or her genius zone in one specific part of the business, let them run with it. You don't got to keep your sticky little paws in it anymore. Go do your thing and then yeah. have that trust to, to know they're doing the right thing. Um, what else could you add or what closing thoughts do you got here, RJ? Well, I know everybody's busy doing what they're doing on uh, November 3rd uh, this time of the year, but for those who have been watching you and I do these videos, um, definitely leave us a comment and let us know what you're thinking, ask questions if you have any questions about what we're discussing um, so that we can add value to uh, your business, uh, whether uh, you're in real estate or anything else. But um, my last thought here is that in order for us to, uh, you and I, to get to the levels that we've, we've reached and we're just getting started, you know, we're, we're talking about just a couple of knuckleheads that invested in ourselves to get to where we are and our network is definitely um, a big part or a big reason of where we are is to always invest in yourself um, because and invest in your partner as well because when one person in that partnership is investing in their mindset and growing you gotta like Dave was saying earlier is you have to sometimes you have to um, have grace and, and let them follow you so that you guys are both on the same page or gals and then um, lastly is that, you know, um, you can, um, I, I said this earlier, we kind of had discussions today about this, but is if you can cut the learning curve by investing in a mentor, but you're not going to see results by cutting the work. You can cut the learning curve, but you can't cut out the work, you can't escape the grind. You got to put in the work to get these results. Or else you end up with a dusty bookshelf. You can invest in all the books and this, that, and the other. If you don't do the work, you get a dusty bookshelf. And, um, you know, I couldn't agree more and very grateful for the partnership that we have. And it always leads back to just honesty and, uh, you know, and doing the right thing. And, um, you know, we all want success overnight, including me. I enjoy success overnight. I just uh, have yet to experience sex, su success overnight. Forgive my... Uh, now I'm the one with the potty mouth over here. Success is what I was saying. Success overnight. <laughs> um, no, I've definitely experienced sex before. Okay. Let's just keep it real. Okay. Um, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. It is November 3rd and it uh, doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. 
Uh, we're Americans together. We got your back. I will fight. Same with RJ. We'll fight for you. We love the hell out of this country. Um, God bless America. God bless all of you. We truly appreciate you, you know, giving us the, uh, the grace that we need to keep doing this kind of stuff. And um, it's right back at you. You know, we are in this thing together. I don't care who you vote for. I mean, I'm, it's staggering voting numbers. You know, it's, it's very impressive. And I couldn't be more proud to be an American. I'm sure RJ will say the same. And, um, you know, God bless this country. God bless all of you. We got your back 100%. And uh, guess what? Whoever wins the election tonight, it doesn't matter. We're still going to be here buying houses, fixing houses, renting houses, selling houses. We are doing this thing 100%, full throttle, and we're not going away anytime soon. So it doesn't matter who you vote for. You are an American. You live in a great place where you can create success for yourself and your family. And we're here to uh, ride that journey with you and hopefully make that journey just a little bit softer. Find us at risewiththecream.com. RJ, what is the cream? It's uh, cash flow, real estate, and money. Where cash flow, real estate, and money, everybody rise with the cream. And I think everybody can uh, answer this little uh, quote here. Finish this phrase with me, RJ. The cream always rises where at the top. And that's exactly where we'll see you. We'll see you at the top, everybody. Have a great day.